defeated Brigham Young, and the Wildcats await the winner of this game. It'll be Creek against Seton Hall. Hello, everybody. I'm Mel Proctor, along with Jack Givens. Not only do we have two quality teams, Creighton defeating New Mexico State, Seton Hall beating Pepperdine in their openers, but we've also got two interesting coaches, both animated, very colorful coaches. They both love good pasta, and they happen to be good friends, Jack. Well, that friendship goes back a long way. They met initially on the recruiting trail. They renew that friendship every summer, worked in the camps around the country. Here they are, Tony Baroni's team, very aggressive, likes to control the tempo. P.J. out of the Big East. They know that this is a tough game. We talked to them about some keys. Here's what they had to say. One, we have to uh, rebound. I think it's going to be very important for us to uh, control the defensive boards and to get some offensive rebounds against them. I think secondly, we've got to do a real good job with our interior defense. We've got to keep Gallagher and Harstead from really hurting us inside and at the same time try and pay attention to the three-point shooters. And I think thirdly, we've got to take good care of the ball. We've had a tendency to turn it over a little bit lately. When you play Seton Hall, you have to do two things. One, you have to go inside. I mean, we're going to go inside. I mean, we're going to throw the ball inside. We're going to make them guard us inside. The second thing that you have to do is you have to penetrate. I think if you stay on the perimeter and try to pass the ball on them, they will make life miserable for you. And the starting lineups, the one-two punch for Creighton, Bob Harstad and Chad Gallagher, the one and two leading scorers in Creighton's basketball history. Anthony Avent will have to stay out with a foul trouble for Seton Hall. Terry DeHara had a big game against Pepperdine with 26 points. <laughs> The officials for this game, Wally Tanner of Jacksonville, Florida, Rusty Herring of Durham, North Carolina, and Andre Patillo of Atlanta, Georgia. Creighton in dark blue, Seton Hall in white, and the Seton Hall Pirates are 19-1 when they wear the white uniforms. They've lost only to Syracuse. Oliver Taylor is fouled by Darren Plouts of Creighton. I think you mentioned that it's going to be real important here today for Anthony Avent to stay out of foul trouble. He got in foul trouble in their win the other day. He has to stay in the game. He has to be involved. They really need him down low. Terry DeHara wastes no time cranking up a jumper. The rebound to Darren Close. And a turnover by Creighton. Oliver Taylor on the pull-up. And Seton Hall takes the lead. Oliver Taylor, who was the Big East Tournament MVP, rather quiet against Pepperdine. He had just seven points in that game. And he's a clutch player. He did a real good job, though, of running the offense. Didn't really look for a lot of shots. Matt Petty and Dewan Cole in the backcourt for Creighton with Darren Fouch, Chad Gallagher, Bob Harstead on the front line. Harstead, number 30. Good defense by Arturus Karnishevis of Seton Hall. Karnishevis did a tremendous job defensively in the game against Pepperdine, especially away from the ball. He had to be the key in that game. Avent with a jump hook. Rebounded by Darren Plouts. Look out. Right at us, Jack. <laughs> well, it's going to be important, obviously, for Creighton to handle the four-court pressure of Seton Hall. Early substitution, Latrell wright Sal checks in for Creighton. Wrightsell and Dewan Cole are extremely quick and match up pretty well with Taylor and DeHare in the Seton Hall backcourt. Wrightsell got a lot of time in the game against New Mexico State. Did a good job, especially down the stretch, of making free throws. DeHare misses the rebound to Chad Gallagher. Creighton is on a roll. They won eight in a row, 15 to the last 16. They go inside to Harstead. Well, that's the way Creighton likes to play. They like to run that patient offense. They will take a good shot every time down. Terry DeHare knocks it down for Seton Hall. DeHare against Pepperdine was 9 for 17 from the floor, 4 for 8 from three-point range, and pumped in 26 points. Right cell with that penetration. There's that quickness we talked about. Yeah, and P.J. Palismo said coming into this game, the one thing that he was really concerned about was Creighton's ability to penetrate and to kick the ball back outside for the three-point shot. Right cell's real good off the dribble and got the foul that time. Foul is on Oliver Taylor. 
The Blue Jays like to post up Gallagher and Harstead inside. A very deliberate, good passing team. They pass the ball about as well as any time they've, the team I've seen. Yeah, they reverse it to the weak side about as well as any. Oh, beautiful entry pass. Darren Fox to Gallagher for the basket. Tony Baroni says, I love it. Well, he should. That's good ball movement and excellent passing. Avent working inside. Winchester on the follow. Winchester's another that Seton Hall must get some plays from. He only had four points and four rebounds in that game against Pepperdine. And a foul was called on Karnishevis of Seton Hall. Uh, Tony Baroni said he was a little concerned about his team being in awe of a Big East team like Seton Hall. He said, that, frankly, we might be a little scared. And I think the way that Creighton Hall play, or Creighton plays early in the game could be a key to this. Well, I think you're right, but they have a lot of experience in that starting lineup. I don't think that playing against the Big East and Seton Hall would bother them at all. Seton Hall, 55. Valdez on Karnishevis. Creighton does a real good job of passing the ball. Now, this pass has to be away from the defense. Lays it right in there on the baseline side and leads to an easy two for Gallagher. Jerry Walker has checked into the game, replacing Karnishevis for Seton Hall. Walker's really been playing well, shooting 72% over his last eight games. Creighton is a real good free throw shooting team. 75%, also an excellent three-point shooting team. Clouch gets the roll, and we're tied at six in the early going. And that'll be a kick, so a new 45-second count in effect for Seton Hall. Creighton will change their defenses around. They play the man-to-man. -man. They'll come at you with about three defense is the one that they like the best is the two three matchup defense but they will change it around the hair forces the shot Taylor misses the follow and Harstead is out of bounds almost climbing the wall well that's the way he plays it's going to be important for him also to stay out of foul trouble today I think Creighton really needs him in the game for him he plays so aggressively especially around the boards Avent, rebounded by Harstead. He's only 6'6", but he blocks out well underneath. They keep the ball moving offensively. Yeah, they do. Right cell into Harstead. Nice dish to Plouts. Well, one pass too many, I think. Harstead. Three second violation. Yeah, Harstead had it. Out of the basket, the number one team in the country in women's basketball lost this afternoon. Well, the Arkansas women can score as well as the men, huh? Tell you what, that might be a good game to see those two teams matched up. Juan Cole is back in the game for Creighton. And a steal by right cell at blinding speed. And he'll go to the free throw line. Wrightsell had his career high 16 points. Tony Baroni won the basket. Tony Baroni won in the goal 10 in the final game of the Missouri Valley Conference. Here it is right here. Watch the anticipation. Gets the steal. And that's going to lead to the foul. He'll have an opportunity here to go to the line for two free throws. I was on Terry DeHair. Right, Sal's father passed away the night before that championship game in the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. He decided that he wanted to go on and play, thought his father would want him to do that. Had his career high 16 points in that game. As the Blue Jays beat Southwest Missouri State for the title, tipped in by Gordon Winchester, and the score is tied. It really helped Creighton's confidence beating a very quick team in North Carolina State, or New Mexico State. The reason I flubbed that one is because I was trying to catch the basketball. They keep wanting us to get involved <laughs> in this game, don't they? Matt Petty is back in the game. I don't know why I'm reaching for the basketball. You're the ex-star. 
Like, I love the way you handle the publicity. People come up to you and say, Jack Givens, you're the guy that scored 42 in the 78 title game, right? And then somebody else will come up and say, Jack Givens, you're the guy that scored 51 in that game, right? And you always correct them and say, no, it was 41. What a guy. What humility. Well, I tell you what, it's fun talking about that game. It brings back a lot of great memories. We're coming out. Not if she can help it. 48 hours, Wednesday. Earlier today in Salt Lake City, Arizona's big front line, led by Brian Williams, dominated 7'6 in Sean Bradley in BYU. Action elsewhere to uh, UNLV in Georgetown tomorrow. George Ackles, the Rebel Center, is hurting. Now he's got a sprained ankle. The Michigan State against Utah. UNLV Georgetown game should be interesting because Alonzo Mourning in a slump earlier this year, but he's playing very well right now. He is playing very well. Seton Hall with 13 shots in this game already. They've now made five of them. Creighton with only four field goal attempts to this point. They've made two. Ryan Caver making the last shots for Seton Hall to give the Pirates the lead. He just came in. Jerry Walker picks off the pass. Taylor to Avent. Harstead with the rebound. He doesn't jump well. He's not real big, but he gets a lot of rebounds. He's built low to the floor, has a real strong lower body. He positions himself very well. He gets a lot of rebounds. He has 16 rebounds against New Mexico State, and that's yeah. a team that really has a lot of great leapers. Well, that just goes to show you when you play the fundamental basketball, do the little things like screening out, you can be very effective. Chad Gallagher, double team, out to Petty for three. And that's what P.J. Colissimo was concerned with right there, the good inside-outside play of this Creighton team. The pass inside to Gallagher and then back out. They go inside to Avon. As Seton Hall takes the lead, 12 to 11. Creighton was the best three-point shooting team in the Missouri Valley Conference this year. We've got three players who are ranked one, two, and three. Gallagher. Rebounded by Jerry Walker. Nice pass. Walker to Avent for the basket. Nice high-low move that time. And Avent doing just what he does best. Puts that big body on the defender. Screens out well for the position down low. Gets the pass for the easy two. Great. Isn't getting many shots. Only six field goal attempts. Harstead inside. Look at him mix it up, though. He's a competitor. I like his effort. He missed an easy one there, but I like his aggressiveness. Dewan Cole is back in the game. Darren Plouts also returns for Creighton. So they have right cell, Cole, Plouts, Harstead, and Gallagher on the floor. Seaton Hall with Taylor and Caver. Jerry Taylor is also in there. Avent and Winchester. Good man-to-man -man defense right now by Creighton. Seaton Hall very patient right here. Oliver Taylor with a fadeaway. Big shot. Seaton Hall has scored six great points, and the Pirates lead by five. Seaton Hall will play the man to man defense 98% of the time. An outstanding defensive team. Darren Clouch for three. Jerry Walker with another rebound. He has four boards. He's coming in. Darren Clouch goes into the bench. Creighton doing a real good job converting defensively. Seton Hall wants to try to force the tempo, wants to try to push the ball down the floor. You saw Terry DeHair coming back into the game. Oliver Taylor will take a seat. So it's Caver, a freshman, DeHair, a sophomore in the backcourt for Seton Hall. That'll be a charging foul on Gordon Winchester. DJ Carlissimo is hot. Well, you'll see Clouts get over here and cut off the baseline, and that's not what PJ wanted. He wants him to move the ball 
get some action. There's a big steal. Steal by DeHair, and he cashes in. 18 to 11, Seton Hall. Right cell to the hoop. Avent rebounds for Seton Hall. That's really not great this game, that wild shot by right cell. They got to settle down a little bit. Yeah, they don't want to get into the up and down game with Seton Hall. They don't feel like they can match up with him that way. And the Pirates turn it over. Tony Baroni, who played for Vic Bubis at Duke. He was an assistant for, under Dick Versace for many years at Bradley, also coached the Chicago High School game. The Creighton guards having a tough time getting the shot off from the outside. They usually like to put it up out there, but Harstead. If you take the ball inside, that works very well. Bob Harstead has four points. Chad Gallagher has two, so the one-two punch really hasn't gotten on track yet for the Blue Jays. Avent with a nice move inside. And a foul was called on Dewan Cole for reaching in. If Avent can continue to catch the ball on the low box like that, he will have an opportunity time and time again to score points. Gallagher must get around in front and not let him catch it so easily. Ossoff Barnea waiting to come in the game for Seton Hall. Looks like he'll be replacing the shooter, Avent. Avent, a potential first round draft pick. Senior from Newark, 6'10, 235 pounds. I think with that strong body, the fact that he has an awareness for the basket it's on the offensive end. He rebounds pretty well. I think there's no question he has a place with some team in the NBA. He's the second team all Big East selection. Also made the Big East all tournament team. Avent makes one out of two and Seton Hall leads by six. It's nice. Not too late. Too late. Good evening, say Monday. 11.29 to go in the first half in Salt Lake City. Seton Hall with a six-point lead. We're going to slide that game down into the bottom left portion of your screen and update you on the other two games in progress. First in the southeast. That's the lower right. Pitt at the free throw line with Bobby Martin. Pitt going against Kansas today. That's in southeast region play. And Mike, tell us what's happened so far. Well, Pitt got off to a terrible start in that game, Jimmy. They, lost, they were down 14-2 to two early. Lost that composure. They've started to get it back. they got to get the ball inside against Kansas. And they've closed it up 22-15 at the current time. I, I know you really like uh, Pitt in that game, but but uh, Billy Packer, let's go to the Midwest right now. Duke and Iowa. Duke led by as many as 10 points early. It's down to five with 3.25 to go in the first half. Well, we have a Tom Davis setting the tempo in this game with full court pressure. I believe Duke is the kind of club that can adjust to that very well, break the press, and then score down the other end. Of course, you have to hit some jumpers. You'd think that uh, they would get some play out of Kubek hitting some jumpers or drives to the basket by, by Hill or uh, either, either of the Hills, Grand Hill or Thomas Hill. So I, I like the fact that uh, Duke can play against this type of defense. All right, so the Blue Devil basket makes it a seven-point edge for Duke. We're going to keep you posted, and uh, more taste coming up at halftime. But right now, let's get you back out west. Seton Hall and Creighton, the six-point lead for the Hall. And here's Mel Proctor and Jack Gibbons. Winchester, Carnishivas also has two fouls. Creighton's Tony Baroni said he thought officiating would be the key to this game. If they call a lot of fouls, he thought his team could be in trouble because they're not very deep. Yeah, they can't go to the benches. Well, as Seton Hall can, but so far the officials let him play. Foul is called on Harstead of Creighton. <laughs> Anthony Avent is back in the game for Seton Hall. <laughs> we are at the Huntsman Center in Salt Lake City, Utah. Second round action. Seton Hall, the third seed, facing 11-seeded Creighton. We have 10:42 remaining in the first half. I'm Bell Proctor along with Jack Gibbons. The winner of this game will face Arizona next week in Seattle in the West Regionals. Anthony Avent over Chad Gallagher. Gallagher with a rebound and the outlet pass to Dewan Cole. Harstead. Jerry Walker got a piece of that shot. Well, Harstad has missed two or three pretty good opportunities under the basket. Saved by Juan Cole. I think Creighton really needs to work right here to get a good shot. They've been down a couple times. Haven't really 
gotten it, and that's a good one right there. Chad Gallagher scores for Creighton. The player of the year in the Missouri Valley Conference this year. His teammate, Bob Harstead, won the honor last year. And Harstead predicted earlier this year that Gallagher would win the honor. Two of the best players in the school's history, and they've had some great ones at Creighton. Benoit Benjamin, Paul Silas, Bob Gibson played both baseball and basketball for the Blue Jays. Kevin McKenna, former NBA player. Terry DeHair knocks it down for Seton Hall. The Pirates lead 21 to 15. Well, he is so quick and playing so well. He was struggling through the Big East tournament. He said those Big East teams, after seeing each other three times over the course of the year, know each other so well. It was just so good to see a different team get away from the Big East. Todd Eisner, number 23, is in the game for Seton Hall. He's a good three-point shooter, but he went one for eight against New Mexico State from three-point range. I think he still needs to keep putting the shot up. Gallagher with a ball fake and the basket. Well, I think uh, going inside to Gallagher serves two purposes. Of course, it keeps the big fella involved in the offense. He works harder on defense, but also they might be able to pick up fouls on that guy right there. And Harstead is fouled by Jerry Walker. Graydon has three team fouls, but Seton Hall has seven. Now here's Gallagher. Watch this move. You see Anthony Avent on him. Avent has to stay out of foul trouble, so he's going to back off. The good second effort by Gallagher. He gets the tip. I think uh, Creighton needs to make sure that they make the effort to get him and get him the ball down low. Matt Petty is back in for Creighton. Free throw shooting could be a key here because Creighton is a great free throw shooting team, 75% on the year, and they're in the one and one already. And if they get three more fouls on Seton Hall, everything will be a two shot foul. But Harstead struggling with his free throw shooting in this tournament. He missed three against New Mexico State. And this is the front end of the one and one. And he's barking at himself again. Well, I think so. He is such a competitor. He wants to make so many things happen. Sometimes you get in a situation where you're trying just a little too hard. I think that's where Harstead is right now. He needs to just relax a little bit. Petty misses the jumper. Right cell can't hold it. Oliver Taylor up for the loose ball. Beautiful pass into Aben, who's fouled by Eisner. Action continuing today. Xavier in Connecticut, Florida State, and Indiana. Oliver Taylor does such a good job of running this team. He is a point guard like not many others in college basketball. He keeps control of the ball just long enough to make sure that his teammates get set. Then the nice bounce pass to Anthony Avent that time leads to the two free throws. Seton Hall has Avent, Winchester, and Walker up front with DeHair and Taylor in the backcourt. For Creighton, it's right cell and Cole with the guards with Eisner, Harstead, and Gallagher up front. Avent is one for three from the free throw line. Four point lead for Seton Hall, 8.22 remaining. First half action. And the Blue Jays turn it over on the errant pass by Todd Eisner. Well, I'm sure Eisner thinking a lot about what happened in the game a couple days ago where he struggled offensively. One of nine from the field. It's very difficult to bounce right back and really have confidence in your game. He threw that one right out of bounds. Taylor. Jerry Walker crashes the boards and tips it to Avent. Good decision. That's what I'm talking about right there. A good point guard that understands the situation. Sorry, he didn't have the numbers. Backed it right out. And De Hair is called for traveling. With 7.45 remaining in the first half, it's 21-17, Seton Hall. The women's final four in two weeks.
Crocker with Jack Evans back in Salt Lake City with seven minutes 45 seconds remaining in the first half. Creighton is shooting only 35% from the floor. Seton Hall 45%. Seton Hall would like to get Anthony Avent going. He's two for nine from the floor so far. And he's getting good shots at the basket. I think he just needs to continue to shoot him up. Right cell against the hair. Oh, I like this aggressive defense by Seton Hall. Gallagher drops it into Harstead. Beautiful pass. Yeah, there's that high-low offense that Creighton likes to run. They're patient. They will move the ball around. A good passing team. And a two-point lead for Seton Hall. Karnishevis into Walker, who's called for traveling. Creighton could take the lead if they can hit a three-pointer. And they can do that. They're a great three-point shooting team. Cole puts up a three, and the Blue Jays have the lead. Well, you called it right. And, of course, once again, that ball movement, getting the ball inside, forces Seton Hall to back off just a little defensively, and that leaves, it, leaves Cole wide open from the outside. Winchester. And Seton Hall is back on top, 23-22. Real nice turnaround jump shot all into the baseline that time by Winchester. In the victory over New Mexico State, Creighton did not do a good job of hitting the three-pointers in the first half, but they did in the second. And DeJuan Cole was fouled. Four of the top six seeds in the East have been eliminated. The Big East doing well, six and one. Seton Hall trying to make it seven and one. Ten of the AP top 25 teams have been eliminated. As we mentioned earlier, UNLV center George Ackles sprained his ankle last night against Montana, and he's questionable for the game tomorrow against Georgetown. I wonder if Eccles will come back and have the kind of game that Brian Williams had in our first game here today. Williams turned his ankle in the game against St. Francis. Came back today with 24 points, 11 rebounds. Dewan Cole, who had 17 points in Creighton's first round victory over New Mexico State. And it's a one-point Creighton lead. This game going just as we suspected. Two evenly matched teams, two well-coached clubs. Seton Hall, no more around the country, but Creighton Hall playing Omaha, Nebraska. They don't get the publicity, but they're a great team. Have you ever seen a college team that passes the ball better in this club? I don't, I've never seen one, and I'm telling you, the passes are short, quick, sharp passes. Foul uh, is on Terry DeHair. Even with the little bounce pass here, Plouts will come over from behind, give the good effort. That saves this team a basket. Uh, Latrell right cell will go to the free throw line. He was the top free throw shooter in the state of Indiana as a junior in high school, but he's shooting only 63% at Creighton. Yeah, but he's playing with a lot of confidence right now. I tell you, I've had an opportunity to talk to this young man a couple times here in the last few days, and a real pleasant young man to talk to. Really loves to play the game. Creighton leads by two, 540 remaining in the first half. Brian Caver, number 10, is back in for the Hall. Caver guns it up. He's just a freshman from Trenton, New Jersey, and P.J. Carlissimo thinks he's going to be an outstanding player. He's got size, he's quick, and he can shoot the ball. Now, Seton Hall goes to a zone for the first time. Yeah, for the first time in the 1-3-1 zone, they will play this just to change the tempo just a little bit. They like to trap out of this zone. They want to get some good passing team that's going to lead to good shots just like that. I'm just thinking the same thing. The way this club passes the ball going to a zone, I don't think it's going to matter much. Well, it's not. They do a good job of passing the ball. They don't try anything fancy. Carnishevis scores for Seton Hall. And this game is really getting intense. They're tied at 27. We're under five minutes. The diagonal pass out is the one that usually beats 
this 2-3, uh, this 1-3-1 one, one zone. Darren Clarks misses the runner, and Avan takes it down. It's his sixth rebound. Avan is whacked across the arm by Chad Gallagher. Well, Gallagher understands is that, that that is not a real smart play, reaching in and, and getting him across the arm instead of moving his feet for better defensive position. Todd Eisner returns for Creighton, replacing Darren Plouts. Tony Baroni, a former Chicago Cubs bat boy, grew up across the street from Wrigley Field, said he was the visiting team's bat boy and still roots for the Cubs. Perry DeHair scores, and Seton Hall leads by two. Well, I like, I like Terry DeHair. He is fun to watch, playing with a lot of aggressiveness, really looking for a shot. Seton Hall stays with a 1-3-1 one, one zone. Watch for the diagonal pass, and then the second pass after that usually leads to the shot. A steal by Aben. Gallagher telegraphed that pass. Count? Not sure. It may have been fouled before the shot. It's on Latrell right cell. And now we get a timeout with 347 remaining in the first half. Seton Hall has a two-point lead over Creighton. Playing basketball is hard on your body, but it's really tough on your feet. The pump. Where were you when I needed you? If I could play today, I'd pump up for support, protection, and a custom fit. Hey, it's time to move to a new neighborhood. Pump up and air out. Switch to the greatest sports performance shoe in the world, the Reebok Pump. Pump up and air out. She's a 69-year-old grandmother on a crusade. Rights for senior citizens? No way. She wants to legalize marijuana. Her story on the CBS Evening News. Mel Proctor with Jack Givens. We're in Salt Lake City, Utah. Seton Hall against Creighton. Second round action from the West Region, Salt Lake City, Utah. I'm Mel Proctor along with Jack Evans. We have three minutes and 36 seconds remaining in the first half. Very even game so far. Creighton's Tony Baroni said he was concerned about his team being in awe of a Big East power like Seton Hall, but they came out and played well early, and that was a key, I think. Yeah, I think so. I haven't seen it from this team so far in this game. Eisner still struggling from the outside. It took Creighton a while to establish their inside game. Brian Caver on the drive for Seton Hall, and he'll go to the free throw line. It took a little while for Creighton's Chad Gallagher and Bob Harstead to get on track, but they have combined for 14 of Creighton's 27 points. In a substitution, Darren Plouts, number 44, replaces Todd Eisner. The last foul was on Eisner. Sean Bradley of BYU. His Cougars lost to Arizona in a game earlier today, and Bradley's collegiate career will be interrupted by a two-year Mormon mission. He had 10 points before fouling out, only the fourth time this year that he fouled out of a game. Just that heavy brace that Matt Eisner wears. He's had anterior cruciate surgery on each knee. Mel, we've seen a real impressive defensive effort by both teams, and I think two teams that were very well prepared for each other. Obviously, they have spent a lot of time talking. Seton Hall now in the 1-3-1 defense. The Pirates like to play the man-to-man -man 90, 95 percent of the time, but they feel like the quickness of Creighton has caused them some problems matching up defensively. Forces a pass in, and the Blue Jays turn it over. Well, that 1-3-1 one, one zone defense is designed to give players an opportunity to shoot the gap, to take some chances, and try to pick up passes. Seton Hall has done that defensively. And Anthony Avent is called for traveling. He struggled in this first half, shooting poorly. This time a turnover. Oliver Taylor, number 20, is back in for Seton Hall, replacing Caver. Something else Seton Hall is not doing well, free throw shooting. They're one for six, and 
This is a team that spends probably more time on their free throw shooting than any other team. Two days ago in practice, they spent 50 minutes shooting free throws. You see that graphic there shows you how well this Creighton team passes the ball and it, the diagonal pass over the top usually leads to good shots. Harstead on the follow. What a tough customer he is. Six foot six inch Bob Harstead from Loveland, Colorado. He was not heavily recruited. Karnishevitz for three. Avent and Gallagher get tied up and the arrow points to Creighton. I'd like the battle between those two guys right there, mm -hmm. Avent 6'10", 235, Gallagher 6'10", 255, really aggressively going at each other. Avent uh, usually draws the double team when he catches the ball down low. Here he is. He turns it over right here. They call him for the travel. I didn't see it, but the officials called it that way. Score tied at 29 with a minute 46 remaining. Seton Hall open to man to man. Now they've gone to a 1 3 1 zone. Great loves those cross court diagonal passes. Well, that's the pass that can beat most zones, but especially the 1 3 1. Latrell right cell on the pull up. Tipped out of bounds by Chad Gallagher of Creighton. I think sometimes Creighton has so much confidence in their ability to pass the ball that they'll force a pass. Well, I think you might be right, but I, I, I tell you what, this team very well coached that diagonal pass against that 1-3-1 one, one defense, and the pass after that is usually the one that beats you. Creighton themselves now dropping back into the 2-3 zone. They will match up out of this zone defense. Seton Hall has not scored in over three minutes. Jerry Walker works inside. Nothing falling for the Hall right now. And Avent is fouled. <laughs> Saw Bob Harstead. Does he play with emotion? Well, he gets mad at himself and upset at the calls. I tell you what, you look at Harstead and you look over there on the Creighton bench at Coach Tony Baroni, and you can see very quickly where that aggressiveness comes from. It starts right over there on the bench. Tony Baroni, very competitive. Brian Caver, number 10. Asaf Barnea, number 23, are back in for Seton Hall. Todd Eisner, 23, is in for Creighton. Well, Seton Hall, a 75% free throw shooting team, having a tough time in the first half. They're one for six. Anthony Avent is one for four, so he's been the culprit. Well, he looks a lot better on that one. His concentration was there. The follow through, all the fundamental things that you have to do from the free throw line was, was there that time. During the season, he's a pretty good free throw shooter, 77% on the year. So much of free throw shooting is confidence. You miss your first couple of attempts. Then you start thinking about missing them instead of making them. He made those two. Hopefully, that will get his confidence going. With less than a minute remaining in the first half, Seton Hall leads by two. Again, the 1-3-1 one, one zone. I like the way uh, Creighton spreads his floor against that 1-3-1. One, one. Caver really has to work. He has to follow every pass. That's a difficult job. There's a three-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. We've got to look for a shot. Eisner from slot corner, a three-pointer. Another bomb by Caver to bring the first half to an end. Well, that's the end of the first half with the score. Creighton 32 and Seton Hall 31. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the second round of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Mazda Cars and Trucks. Mazda, it just feels right. The greatest sports performance you in the world. The Reebok Pump, Pump Up and Air Out. And by Pizza Hut and their new MVP for topping pizza. Financial Network. On land, at sea, and in the air, they're keeping Miami nice. This is awesome! Making a big splash in Police Academy 5 tonight. If she pleads guilty to a driving offense, she's admitting it's her car, and we can connect her to the jewelry.
and the murder. Suppose we go to court on this and I, and I twist you up like a pretzel. Your pizza's getting cold. Damn! The Antagonist, Tuesday, March 26th. This is CBS. The Rod and Roll. Behold, the Sherman Shuffle. The Buck and Wing. Nike. Good luck. Take a lesson. Tango. Nike, at Foot Locker, where it all begins. Creighton has the lead at halftime with the three-pointer to end the first half. The Blue Jays over the three seed in the West. And let's show you what's happening elsewhere. Uh, you can see action in Louisville, Pitt, and Kansas. That's actually a halftime highlight segment there at the half in that ball game. And uh, Duke and Iowa just starting the second half, and Duke with a 15-point lead. Mike, tell us about Seton Hall. The Pirates, of course, your team. Uh, I'm surprised at how well Creighton has played. They're very well drilled. Uh, Seton Hall missed some free throws, which is uh, strange for them. They're a very good free throw shooting team. They need to get even the ball down low a little more second half. Billy, your thoughts about that? I want to game. know how many teams the guy has. He's a lot of Louis Carnesecca <laughs> sweater. Then he says he's Seton Hall. Every time we're in here, he picks a different club. And he's taking care of the Big East. <laughs> he, does, he does like Pitt, though, today over Kansas. I know that. Kansas uh, has a two-point lead at halftime. But right now, <laughs> Billy, I'm going to take you out to the Midwest. Please. Dick Stockton and Billy Cunningham <laughs> in the start of the second half right there. Second the Duke Blue Devils first. lead the Iowa Hawkeyes 46-29 to in the second-round matchup. Duke trying to get to the regional semifinals at Pontiac, Michigan, and the Blue Devils are now on a 17-1 run after Iowa came within three, almost midway through the first half. Well, they came out of the locker room like they started the ball game with the intensity. Defensively, they picked Curry in a couple turnovers, and they've converted, and Hurley has made the right decisions every time with the ball. Big game for Hurley to try to make those decisions against the Iowa zone, and he's done a perfect job that way thus far. Taking a look here at this bracket in Minneapolis, the winner of this Iowa Duke clash will take on the survivor of UConn and Xavier later, and the winner, two winners, will move on to Pontiac and the regional semifinals next week. A.C. Earl, the leading scorer, for the Hawkeyes. He doesn't start, but he comes off the bench, has six points right now. Well, the Rodell Davis leads with nine. Luke Brown, by the way, was on Christian Leitner. Iowa's got to solve some problems if they're going to get back in this game. We'll see something right now. If Earl makes this foul shot, have they solved the problem with their full court trap? Will they allow Duke to throw it over the top? They do. It's a three-on-two break. Kubek steadies, goes for three, and hits. And Greg Kubek with his first three-point basket of the game. And he's the best three-point shooter of Duke, shooting 44% from the field. Rodell Davis baseline. He's got 11 to lead the Hawkeyes. There's the long pass. Skinner was back there. No harm, no foul, but Grand Hill beats Thomas Hill, and they've got to do something because Duke is getting three-on-one and two-on-one layups throughout this game. And, and, and every time, Thomas Hill finishing it off at the other end. 13 for Thomas Hill. James Moses in the lane, and it drops for him. Well, one thing we're seeing is now, now uh, Iowa is picking up full court after made field goals. The first half, it was just foul shots. Thomas Hill loses the ball to Moses, and one of the rare Iowa fast breaks. Moses hits the jumper. He's got 10 points in the game. Up tempo it is, and it's 53 to 37. Duke still in control. This is the area of the game Iowa has done a good job. They have stopped Duke. The only spot they were hurting was on the offensive glass, but they've done a good job on the inside defense. Kristen Leitner with 14 points. Kristen Leitner gives Duke the 18-point lead, and there is, again, another game taking place uh, at the moment. It's at halftime in Louisville, and it's Kansas and Pittsburgh. Kansas has the two-point lead, Mike Francesa. And, you know, I was going to ask you about that game, but since we've 
been watching Billy throughout the, the tournament passing off. What do you say we, we pass it off to Billy? Bounce just pass. The bounce, bounce pass. pass. Billy, what about that game? <laughs> just so I don't have to pass it back here. I didn't pass to my mother. I can catch him and shoot. What game do you want me to talk about? The Panthers and in in Kansas. Well, my, Mike picked Pitt, and, and they're making a nice comeback. And this Pitt team, you know, they got over the hump with that big win against Georgia. It's the kind of thing that a senior ball club sometimes wins that close game and can make this return. Now, Kansas is a club well-drilled, as we know. It's a team that uh, Jerry Tarkanian says of all the people he likes to watch on TV, Kansas is the one he likes to watch. But this Pitt team's coming back, so give Mike some credit Not for yet. his pick right there. Not yet. Not yet. I they didn't shoot the ball that well in the first half, and that's a good, a good sign for them going into the second half. There are a lot of coaches around the country, though, who admire the work of Roy Williams at Kansas. And, and admire my passing drill. Yeah, well, uh, well I think this, <laughs> this. we have seen this a few times the last few days. Let's dish off now the uh, final scores from earlier today. Temple is into the Sweet 16. So hard to figure in this tournament. The Owls make it with a 77-64 win, and there's the team they'll play next, Oklahoma State, winning by nine. And how about free throw shooting for the Cowboys? 27 of 29 against North Carolina State. Here's your East bracket, Mike Francesa. And Temple, Mark May and went to the Meadowlands, went to the regional final, and lost to Duke four, when he was a freshman four years ago. Now he returns in his senior season. He'll be in the regional at the Meadowlands. And, of course, there's going to be a 12 or a 13 seed there, depending on that Penn State, the Eastern Michigan outcome, which will take place tomorrow. And in the West, the final from out there, Arizona with a big game from Brian Williams, 15-point win over BYU. Brian Williams, 24 points, 11 rebounds, and three blocks. How does it shape up, Billy? Well, I certainly like the Arizona team. We've talked about them all year long from the very beginning of the season uh, right up to now. It's a club that could be on a collision course with that number one guy up there, UNLV, and one of the few teams in the country can probably match him up at least inside, and they're three deep at the guard position. By the way, uh, Arizona will move on to Seattle, and the Seattle Regional is a Thursday-Saturday combination. Women's East Region action, second round. Penn State, the one seed, knocked out today by the eight seed, James Madison, and Arkansas, the three seed in the Midwest for the women, won by 37 over Northwestern. Now, here's the slate of games in the fourth part of your quadruple header. Some will see Florida State against Indiana. Others will watch uh, Xavier against UConn. And we'll get you back out to uh, Salt Lake City for the second half of Seton Hall and Creighton. The Blue Jays with the one-point lead. We'll get you there in just a moment. Return to Salt Lake City after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the second round of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Mercedes-Benz, engineered like no other car in the world. UPS, now offering 1030 a.m. guaranteed overnight air delivery. And by Nike, who reminds you to just do it. The state capitol building, we're in Salt Lake City, Utah, where Creighton is trying to upset the third seed, Seton Hall. Creighton beat a good New Mexico State team in their first round game, and they're playing well again tonight. Hello, everybody. I'm Mel Proctor, along with Jack Givens. And it seems to me that Seton Hall, in a sense, is contributing to their own undoing. They normally shoot free throws well. They're three for eight. They're normally a good three-point shooting team. They've hit none of those. Well, they are struggling offensively, but what has happened is they have been forced to go to the 1-3-1 one, one defense, and that has really allowed Creighton to get into the flow offensively. Watch how the ball movement is here. Four passes, you'll see. It never hits the floor. It's going to lead to the high-low offense. Gallagher is going to get the nice little pass down low to Harstead, and that is the way Creighton loves to play right there. Don't be surprised if you see more of that if Seton Hall stays in the zone. There's Chad Gallagher. He and uh, Bob Harstead both playing well. Seton Hall shooting 45%, Creighton 42%, but they made up for that with their three-point shooting. They've hit three of six. Seton Hall has yet to make one. It's interesting. Creighton, an average of six passes before they take a shot. Seton Hall doesn't waste much time. Two passes, and they let it fly. Well, they're trying to force the tempo. They're trying to get Creighton up and down the floor. A steal by Darren Plouts of Creighton. Harstead and Gallagher each have eight points to lead. Creighton, Terry DeHair has eight to top the Seton Hall scoring. Well, the one-two punch doing the job for Creighton. DeHair would like to get a few more shots up. Oliver Taylor, his backcourt partner, has been real quiet this tournament so far. 
Matt Petty and Dewan Cole in the backcourt. Darren Plouch, Chad Gallagher, and Bob Harstead on the front line for Creighton. The entry pass to Gallagher, and he's tied up by Arturis Karnishevitz. Well, that's uh, what uh, Karnishevitz did in the game against Pepperdine. He had five steals in that game. All of them come in on plays just like that, where he comes over from the weak side and is able to pick the passes off. Matt Petty misses the jumper. Karnishevitz with the rebound. Seton Hall has Karnishevitz, Anthony Avent, Gordon Winchester on the front line, Oliver Taylor, and Terry DeHair at the guards. Avent. Avent struggled in the first half. Yeah, he hasn't had a lot of success down there. He's been getting good shots. He was only two of nine at the half. That one right there will help him get going. Gallagher out to Petty for a three-pointer. Saved by Taylor. DeHair takes it to the hoop. Oh, he's so good off the dribble. He's a gutsy player. Likes to take it on the inside. Good ball control and good body control on that play. Terry DeHair, a first-team all Big East selection. Seton Hall leads by three, and looks like we've got an offensive foul coming up here. Ron Matt Petty of Creighton. Substitution, Latrell Wrightsell, number 24, is in for the Blue Jays. I really like the backcourt combination of Wrightsell and Dewan Cole. They work very well together, a lot of quickness. Oliver Taylor, three-pointer. Well, you've been wanting Taylor to become more involved offensively. On that shot, he spot up, spotted up behind the line, and a six-point lead now for Seton Hall. Braden has scored seven unanswered points to open the second half, and the Pirates lead by six. Braden's going to get back to their patient, disciplined game. They Looks like they rushed a couple of shots when they first came out in the second half. Harstead. That's the that's shot they need right there, and the ball movement was just superb. Ten points for Bob Harstead, and it's a four-point Seton Hall lead. Traveling is the call against Anthony Avent. He's been called a couple of times tonight for shuffling his feet. Well, he feels the big body of Chad Gallagher behind him. He wants to try to use his quickness to get a step going to the basket, but he forgets to put the dribble down, and they've caught him two or three times, as you mentioned. Harstead gets inside position, and Karnishevis is forced to foul him. We've talked about Harstad's ability to position himself under the under the basket. Doesn't jump real high, but he's built low to the ground, has a strong lower body, and positions himself for offensive opportunities. That's the third foul on Arturis Karnishevis. Bob Harstad, who was the player of the year in the Missouri Valley Conference last year. This year he finished second to his teammate Chad Gallagher. He's really had trouble with his free throw shooting. He was three for six. In the first round game against New Mexico State, he's 0 for 2 tonight and has a tendency to mutter to himself what he's missing. <laughs> some words that, uh, some choice words that we won't repeat. 38-35, Seton Hall, 17 minutes remaining. Avent working hard inside. Well, Seton Hall really working hard right now to get the ball down low to Anthony Avent. He has that wide body. He's able to position himself. He's had a lot of good shots, just simply has not made a lot of them. Avent now has 11 points to lead Seton Hall scoring. They want to go into Gallagher, but Seton Hall has taken that away. Now they get it to him. Clouts can't hold it. Oliver Taylor, Winchester. Seton Hall leads by seven. The big guys for the Hall shooting themselves inside. Harstead on the pull-up. Gallagher with the offensive rebound. 
motion which takes it down for Seton Hall. Now Gallagher's missed two or three opportunities down there. Look at Aben running the floor. De Hare knocks down a three-pointer and there's a foul. Foul is on Latrell right cell of Creighton. Terry DeHare, who throws them up from the chief seats, nails one from deep in the right corner. Well, he gets up, uh, he runs the floor very well right here, spots up behind the line, gets the three-point shot to go, and he'll have a chance for a four-point play when we come back. Mel Proctor with Jack Givens back in Salt Lake City, Utah. The second half of this second round game, and it's been all Seton Hall so far. The Pirates have hit six consecutive field goal attempts, and Terry DeHare trying to put the finishing touches on a four-point play. He hit the three-point shot, but he misses the free throw. And Seton Hall, very poor free throw shooting today. The three for nine, and this is an excellent free throw shooting team. Up over 75%, a five-second violation, so tell you the different defensive pressure has picked up for Seton Hall they're controlling the boards giving up only one shot every time down for Creighton and that initiates the fast break opportunities they're taking advantage of we saw the same type of thing happening against Pepperdine in Seton Hall's first round game Pepperdine played pretty well in the first half but that constant defensive pressure just wore them down in the second half Pepperdine also had some small guards you look out here at Creighton they have a couple of small guards and Taylor and DeHare having no trouble getting shots off. Taylor misses a three-pointer, but DeHare scores. 15 points for Terry DeHare. And Seton Hall leads by 12, their biggest lead. Gallagher moves outside for a three-pointer. Two on the touch, 6'10". 245. He's only attempted 10 of them this year, and he's made five. The hair is on fire now. Yeah, when he fills it like that, you just simply have to get out and put a hand in his face. The problem with doing that, he's so quick off the dribble, he can easily create opportunities for himself that way. Boy, De Hare is, is talking some trash to Latrell Wrightsell as he brings the ball across. Working his mouth and his feet. Well, it's a good combination right now. He's winning in both of them. Todd Eisner launches a three. 50 to 41, Seton Hall. Taylor takes it inside. It's taken away by Cole, but he's called for a foul. Well, I thought Cole came up with a real good defensive play right there. Good quickness, good conversion from defense to offense by Seton Hall. They are really pushing the ball down the floor, getting some good opportunities. Darren Plouts is back in for the Blue Jays, replacing Eisner. them from everywhere right now. And a turnover by Creighton. They're struggling right now. They're shooting poorly. They're having trouble in the ball getting the inside, and they're also turning the ball over. Now that's something we really haven't seen Creighton do a whole lot of what we've seen here in this second period, and that is to get out of control and turn the ball over. Creighton now in a 2-3 zone defense. They played it a while in the first half. They're here again with it. for three. Clouch with the rebound for Creighton. They go into Gallagher, one of the few times he's had the ball, but it's blocked by Anthony Avent. Avent doing a real good job defensively on Gallagher. Winchester with a jam. Well, as I say, Seton Hall converting very quickly and very effectively from defense to offense. The good outlet passes lead to the quick opportunity. And Creighton is out of control right now. The defensive pressure is forcing him to do things they don't want to do, and Tony Baroni senses that, and he has called for a timeout. So with 13-18 left, Seton Hall has an 11-point lead. Creighton's Tony Baroni called a timeout, I'm sure, to try to settle his team down. 
They're not playing their game right now. They're playing this one at Seton Hall's Temple. Now the Creighton style will not allow them. They're not really the kind of team that can come back from a big, big lead, a big deficit, because they are a patient team. Dionysius was over the midcourt line, so it's a violation over and back. And the ball goes over to Creighton. What, the, what they can do to try to get back in this game is hit some three-pointers because they're a good three-point shooting team, and they've hit five out of nine today. Yeah, they have to find a way to get those shots. The guards, though, will have trouble because they are smaller than the Seton Hall guards. Harstead misses the shot. Those are the shots right there that Creighton must convert on. Gallagher and Harstead have had a lot of opportunities down there this game. Anthony Avent having a good second half. He has 13 points for the game. And, and that's what Tony Veroni was concerned with. He thought that if Avent had the kind of game he's having here in the second half, it would be a long afternoon for Creighton. The biggest lead for Seton Hall. Avent has managed to stay out of foul trouble, unlike the first game against... Creighton, when they have been able to get into their offense without making a turnover, really have gotten good shots at the basket. So it's out of bounds with 12-03 remaining. P.J. Carlissa, most team, beat Pepperdine 71-51 in their first game. Avant played only 19 minutes in that game because of foul problems. Another Creighton turnover. That's killing them right now. Well, it really is, and we talked about how good a passing team they are. Avant scores again. Creighton really not showing that, and I really think you have to look right to Seton Hall and the fact that they are so aggressive defensively in the passing lanes. They're getting hands-on passes not giving up anything easy. This game is beginning to get away from Creighton. Darren Plouts for three. Rebounded by DeHare, who seems to be everywhere. And one shot once again for Creighton. Arizona's Lou Olson doing a little scouting. His team will meet the winner of this game next week in Seattle. Well, the Wildcats were impressive today in beating BYU. DeHare on the scoop. DeHare with the offensive rebound. <laughs> What an effort by Terry DeHaro. Oh, man, just concentration and good effort. Stayed right with it. He thought he was fouled on the play. Didn't get the call, but still got the basket. DeHaro has 20 points now. Right cell. And again, Creighton forcing things, playing out of control, taking bad shots. Now they're playing Seton Hall's game. That's part of Seton Hall's philosophy. Aggravation defensively and force the bad shots. Foul was called on Bob Harstead of Creighton. That's his third. Wow. Terry DeHare having a real good game once again. Watch right here. The little scoop, he doesn't get it. Goes for the second shot. Now look how long he stays down there. Got fouled right there going to the basket. He was barking at the officials as he ran back down the floor. He's getting a rest. He deserves it. Plays very hard. DeHare gets a free there. Karnishevis is fouled on the drive. So DeHare leaves the game with 20 points. Foul is on Darren Klaus. That's his second. Oh, what a what difference a half makes, huh? Yeah, I'll tell you what. Seton Hall defensively has obviously done a great job. Only nine points they've given up with 10.46 left in the second period. Artemis Karnishevis, a freshman from Vilnius, Lithuania. P.J. Carlissimo learned about him from Sharonis Marcellonis, the Soviet star now playing for the Golden State Warriors. Seton Hall has run off 10 straight points, and the Pirates lead 60 to 41. This doesn't look like the same Creighton team that was here in the first half. It really doesn't. Especially, it doesn't look like the same team from a couple of days from a couple of days ago. Gallagher finally gets the little jump hook to go. He's had a lot of those shots down there. Just has not made them. It's his first field goal of the second half. And the ball is kicked, so the shot clock will be reset. Coming up next, Xavier against Connecticut. Indiana had a tough time against Coastal Carolina in their opener. They'll meet Florida State. 10-20, remaining second half. It's been all Seton Hall in the second half. Ryan Caver, number 10, and they're at guard, giving DeHare a breather. Carnishevis is 55. 
Good role player for this team. Oh, he is he is very effective. Oliver Taylor. Well, as I mentioned, the Seton Hall guards not having any trouble getting their shots off over the smaller Creighton guards. Seton Hall has outscored Creighton 31 to 9 in the second half. And Gallagher loses the ball out of bounds. And boy, this Creighton can't do anything right right now. Well, they really cannot. And Bob Harstead checks back into the game. Asner will check out. Gordon Winchester's back in for Seton Hall, replacing Karnishevich. Jerry Walker with the entry pass to Avent. Avent over the top for the rebound. Oliver Taylor sets it up. Avent having his way under the basket on both ends, but especially down there on the offensive end. Look how aggressively he is posting up. He needs to have the ball. Taylor's call for traveling. Uh, we Avent. raved about Creighton's passing in the first half, but in the second half, Seton Hall has passed the ball well. It's almost as if these teams switched uniforms. Well, Seton Hall is a good team anyway. I think, Mel, you're right, though. Creighton not showing that good, sharp passing ability that we saw in the first half. They are struggling now offensively. Juan Cole scores for Creighton, and now let's go to Jim Nance in New York. Okay, Mel, we're going to spread it out, go to the four corners, and get you updated around the country. First of all, Pitt and Kansas are playing in the second half of that ball game. Eight minutes, 15 seconds remaining, and uh, Pitt's been in a drought. Let's uh, get the story from Mike Francesa. Well, big key, Jim, was Pitt took a, a quick lead in the second half, 37-36. Brian Shorter got his fourth foul about five minutes ago, had to go to the bench. Pitt didn't score in five minutes. Right now, they're down eight, going to the line to shoot the two. Still in the game, they need Shorter back on the floor. It had been 55-40. 45 pit then with the basket to cut it to eight and there's Darren Morningstar for the Panthers going to the line with 815 remaining in that ball game. Meanwhile in uh, the Midwest region Duke is going against Iowa Duke's lead in the second half one time by as much as 20 points it's down to 16 Billy Packer the story in this one. Well Jim Duke got into that lead early in the ball game went against the press very effectively are controlling the boards completely it's been a matter of Iowa just tenaciously trying to hang into this game but Duke's been controlled through the entire time expect them now to go to the delay game the last three or four minutes of this ball game and, and certainly hang on for a win. Pitt's Darren Morningstar made only one of two free throws so it's a Kansas seven-point lead. And right now, let's get a live taste from the announcers in the Midwest with uh, Dick Stockton and Billy Cunningham. The Duke Blue Devils are up 6.75. To 60 with 4.39 to play. Christian Leitner has just come back in the game for Duke playing with four personal fouls. Chris Street makes one free throw. And Duke trying to use the clock and move on to the regional semifinals. Well, from the opening tip, Duke has controlled this game, and they did that in the fashion with their defense intensity at the, uh, creating turnovers, leading to easy baskets because they have not shot the ball very well today. Believe it or not, leading by, what, 15 points. They were shaky early. They've come on in the second half to be respectable in the shooting department. But they've handled Iowa's full court press with ease. But you know what I'm saying? They have had some layups, but we haven't seen a Duke team that has shown us that they can shoot the ball from the perimeter. And that's something they're going to have to do as they move along. Christian Leitner, as the clock runs down to one second, rebound by Street. And you're right, Bobby Hurley, only two points today. You've got to have more offense for the home court. One three-pointer, and that comes from Kubek. A.C. Earl. This is inside. Rebound, Val Barnes. 75 to 60, a 15-point game. Earl hits from outside, but this one is starting to become a factor. You know, one thing you love about Iowa, they came out sluggish. Tom Davis called a timeout, and they came out with intensity, and they played hard. Now, they've turned the ball over, but those are things you could correct. If you don't play hard, that's a tough thing to correct. Minneapolis today. 
Duke trying to finish off Iowa and advance to Pontiac in the Midwest Regional semifinals next week, leading 75 to 62 with 327 to play. Beating the full court pressure in the same manner all the time with the long pass. McCaffrey won't try it over AC Earl for sure. No need to. Iowa's going to have to make a decision. Either they're going to have to start obviously looking for the steal, but do they start taking those fouls? There's a foul there, and that is the 10th team foul. It'll be two shots for the Duke Blue Devils. Troy Skinner and McCaffrey is on the line. Best free throw shooter for Duke on the stripe right now at 86%. Never led in this game, and Duke was up by as much as 20. Iowa cut it to 12. That's as close as they came. Street and Barnes back in the lineup for Iowa. Leading scorer. Big game for James Moses today with 17. AC Earl with 15, and Rodell Davis 11 are the double-figure scorers for Iowa. Leitner with 19. Thomas Hill with 16 are the top scorers for the Blue Devils. Duke is in a 2-3 zone, just putting a little pressure on the ball, making it tough for the three. James Moses misses the three, rebound by Bobby Hurley. And he's fouled by Street. Duke has been so quick to the basketball today. Long rebounds, their guards being able to chase it down, balls on the floor, there they are picking them up, converting them into easy baskets. Four fouls on Street. AC Earl also in there with four. Guys. Final in women's action in the NCAA play. Bobby Hurley on the line. He has scored only two points today. Came in the game averaging over 11. Scored five in the opening round victory over Northeast Louisiana. One shot, guys. His flow game has been excellent. For the season, he averages over five turnovers a game. Today, he's just done an excellent job handling the ball and making the right decisions. Kevin Smith goes inside with the big boys and misses the rebound by Leitner. Duke is going to advance into the regional semifinals. They lost to North Carolina in the Atlantic Coast Conference Tourney Final and looked like they're back playing the kind of ball that they played in the latter stages of the season. And an Iowa foul against James Moses. That's his fourth. There's Tom Davis. Of course, everyone calls him Dr. Tom Davis, and no one really has found out, well, what is he a doctorate of? Well, Bill, you're going to be interesting to know that he has his dissertation on the physical endeavors of colonial Americans. In other words, Ben Franklin used to jog. Could, could, could I get a copy of that? Yeah, send it to your home. <laughs> you know, it's one of those just send 50 cents and, <laughs> and a self-addressed stamped envelope. They talk about, you know, they would say Dr. Tom Davis. You're in the back of me and Tom. As if that's his first name. Thomas Hill misses the free throw. One shot. One that time. If Mike Krzyzewski was to pick an MVP for these first two games in the tournament, I think he'd point right at Tom Thomas Hill for the way he has performed for this team. Well, he scored 18 points in the opening round victory. He's got 17 now. So he's on a high. Moses tries to get it into A.C. Earl out of bounds, and they'll turn it back over to Duke. And that was Thomas Hill again, knocking it loose, forcing the turnover. But from Iowa's team, has got to take something positive out of this experience. Now they understand and know what it's going to take for them when they get back into this situation 
how they're going to have to respond mentally, how they're going to have to prepare for the game, and what they're going to have to do physically on the court. Marty Clark, a freshman guard, is into the game. He's out of Westchester, Illinois, getting a chance to play in the second round of the tournament with the time running down. Early, deflected out of bounds. Clay Buckley now comes in for the Duke Blue Devils and, and a bunch of substitutions. Christian Leitner goes out of the game. He scored 19 points today and had four rebounds and leads Duke in the second straight game in the tournament. And you made a point earlier in the game. Dick, when you mentioned about the goals of the different teams in Iowa, you know, coming back from and making this tournament with, with two weeks left in the regular season, they weren't sure if they would get here, but to win their first game, their goals will change for next year. They will not be happy if they just get to the final 32. All right, so the Duke Blue Devils are headed to the Sweet 16. And let's go back to the full reset. Seton Hall, look at that, a 24-point lead. Mike, in the second half, I hate to compare final four teams, but a 45-20 run by Seton Hall in the second half. It reminds me, as we watch Duke play, of the Seton Hall run against Duke in the final four out in Seattle. You remember that? Well, they're not as deep as that team. They don't shoot the three as well, and they're not as experienced. But this team plays defense with any team in the country. A great defensive display, a five Final four display in the second half. They just completely took over the game against a very good Creighton team. And Billy, how about an Arizona Seton Hall matchup? Well, one of the things I want to mention about that too, we talked at the top of the show about the great post play inside for Creighton, but I said that with Walker and Avent that Seton Hall had great post defense. They showed that today, and of course, the rest of their game, the way they can get outside, run the court very well from the back court. This is an explosive team, but again, one of those teams extremely young, maybe a year away, but they make it to the final four anyway. In answer to your question Mike they match up very nicely with Arizona that would be one basketball game maybe as tough as any we've had in this tournament that's going to be a basketball game that will take place in Seattle again that's the side of Seton Hall's trip to the final four in 1989 and that'll be a matchup on Thursday Seton Hall against Arizona now the other team in the big a big east in uh, action at the moment Kansas and Pitt 440 to go in that game and Kansas with a 10-point lead Pitt just got free throws from Jason Matthews he's only Four for 13 from the field is Jason Matthews, Pitt's leading scorer. And uh, Pitt has just been fouled. Let's get out there right now live with Sean McDonough and Bill Walton. Freedom Hall in Louisville. It's second round action in the Southeast region. Pitt the number six seed, Kansas the three seed. The Jayhawks have led virtually throughout. And they lead by 10 with 435 to play. Sean McDonough and Bill Walton with the first of two games today here in Louisville, Florida State and Indiana to follow. Darrell Porter at the line. He made the first of two. He now has seven points. Pittsburgh beat Georgia in overtime in round one. Kansas eliminated New Orleans. And in the second game tonight, Florida State and Indiana. Indiana survived a scare from Coastal Carolina, who closed within three in the second half of Thursday night's action. Darrell Porter shooting the free throw really disappointing a year ago he would have made a tremendous spectacular dunk on that play now he's caught from behind hate to see a guy with an injury wreck his career like that hope it gets better for him you saw brian shorter on the bench he has four fouls this is woodbury he's now in the backcourt with jordan and brown just passed but randall missed the jam jameson Fed Randall for what looked like an easy two, but it was contested, and he missed. Antoine Jones scores as he collided with Randall. Interior passing and guard play has been the di difference in this basketball game. Mark Randall continuing to flop around on defense. At, if Kansas progresses in this tournament, uh, that's going to hurt Kansas, I believe. Pitt has gone to a man-to-man. -man. They have to force the issue now, trailing by seven. As we approach three and a half minutes remaining. Kansas, Coach Roy Williams admits they're not a good rebounding team, but they have out-rebounded Pitt in this half by 18 to nine. Jameson has two more. He now has 10 for the game. The lead is nine. That's the way you play basketball. Give and go, pass and cut. Pressure defense, fast break, hit open shots. Porter 
Jordan Reddick went for the rebound, then it was knocked away, but it wound up in the hands of Alonzo Jamison. Woodbury kicks it out to Brown. He was called on the drive by Jason Matthews. First personal on Matthews, Brian Shorter, ready to check back in for Pitt. Time out with 2.57 left and with the Jayhawks leading by nine. These two teams even as far as three point shots are concerned. They've each converted nine second chance points and that's a result of rebounding we talked about the surprising two to one edge in this half for Kansas on the boards Roy Williams said he just wanted his team to hold its own in this game on the board they've done better than that that was a charge timeout to Kansas on that whistle even though it would have been a TV timeout every ensuing foul will result in a two shot opportunity for each team and the arrow points to Kansas you talked about the domination of the boards of, of Kansas. Uh, I don't really think that's a uh, just a, a reflection of the rebounding. I think that's the whole basketball game. I mean, Kansas has been to every quick ball, every loose ball. They've been quicker. They've been stronger. They're in better shape. They're, they started the game ready, alert. Pittsburgh, on the other hand, has been standing around sluggish, uh, almost behind on, on every play throughout the game. 18 points for Brown, 14 of the this half. And from this point on, both teams will Pitt needs to do a bunch in a hurry. The Panthers trail by 11 with 2.53 to play. Tim Glover has come back in as the three-point threat. Three three-point shooters in the game with Matthews and Miller as well. And continuing if Kansas pressure defense, even though they got the nine-point lead, two and a half to go, they never let up. That's a sign of a good ball club who will go a long way. Seton Hall Pirates on their way to the Sweet 16. Lonzo Jamison just picked up his fourth foul here for Kansas. Now apparently Paul Evans is making substitutes based on offense to defense. All right, folks, we're going to get you back for the very finish of the game from Salt Lake, Seton Hall, and Creighton. The gap has been tightened to 14, but only 45 seconds left, and P.J. and company will be headed to Seattle. Back to Melvin Jack. The game in Salt Lake City, Seton Hall playing a near-perfect second half until the last five minutes. They open up a 27-point lead, and P.J. Carlissimo will look to his bench. Creighton start throwing in three-pointers, and they've got back to within 14 points. Darren Pouch goes to the basket. Petty up with a loose ball. Right cell shot will fall. Mel Proctor with Jack Gibbons. We're in Salt Lake City, Utah. Valiant comeback by Craig, but it's going to fall short. Well, they have definitely done a good job. Creighton coming back in this game. Seton Hall came out in the second half and just played a, a, a great game. I mean, they took Creighton out of everything they wanted to do offensively. They forced the turnovers, went down and converted on those. Seton Hall played very well. Matt Petty misses a three-pointer. And a foul is called on O'Dowd. So in the battle between the two good friends, Tony Baroni of Creighton, P.J. Carlissimo of Seton Hall. P.J. is going to come away with a win. I, I guess Tony Baroni will be buying the pasta tonight. I think so. I think Baroni, though, must be real pleased with his team not giving up in this game. Down by 27 points, they had an opportunity to just die. P.J. had his team very well prepared, took them in at halftime, gave them a lecture, told them that they had to come out and play harder. I thought their defensive pressure in the second half was the difference in the game. Terry DeHair has led the way for Seton Hall with 28 points. He's been brilliant in the tournament with 26 and 28 in two games. And Anthony Avent stayed out of foul trouble, scored and rebounded well. He has 17 points, also in double figures and rebounds. Latrell Wrightsell scores. But that'll do it. Well, Creighton led by one at the half, 32-31. But Seton Hall dominating the second half behind the play of Terry DeHare and Anthony Avent. 
and P.J. Carlissimo's Pirates are headed to Seattle to meet the Arizona Wildcats. For Jack Gibbons, I'm Mel Proctor in Salt Lake City, Utah, where the final score of today's second round game is Seton Hall 81, Creighton 69. And Seton Hall will now face Arizona in the West Regional Semifinal in Seattle.